Hi, my name is Mark Brommel. I'm a senior product specialist at 4NF and in this video I'm going to show you how to build a new report in just a few minutes. I'm going to do this using the latest version of 4NAV, version 3, and I'm going to use NAV 2018 as my version of NAV. The easiest way to create a new report is by launching the 4NAV designer and in the 4NAV designer we click the option new. Before we do that we need to test a few prerequisites. We do that using the settings menu. In the settings menu we can check how the 4NAV designer is connected to the NAV backend in the NAV tab. In the NAV tab we can select which SQL server 4NAV is connected to. We have the option of using Windows authentication or database server authentication and we select the database name which in this case is the NAV 2018 Cronus database and we need a link to the finsql.exe. We need that because 4NAV is going to inject the report into Seaside using PowerShell and PowerShell is going to leverage the finsql.exe. So let's select new and if we select new we get the option of selecting a report from report templates or the 4NAV report pack. In this case we want to create a completely new report so we're going to select report templates and this allows us to select between a header line template, an item inventory template and a blank list template. And for this report, for this video, we're going to use the list template report. You can see in the preview that it's not going to be a completely blank report. It does contain a header and a footer. So let's select this one and 4NAV will build the report for us in the background. And you can see that um, the header and the footer looks exactly the way that the preview showed us in the gallery. The next step is to save this report in, uh, in Seaside. To do that we can change the object number or the object name. If I go to my Seaside environment you can see that currently I don't have report 50,000 in my database. So let's select object number 50,000 but as an object name I'm going to select customer top 10 list video. Make sure to explicitly leave the property field otherwise it will still work with the previous value and now I have the option of saying save object in an AV. Alternatively I can save the object as a text file and then import the report as a text file in Seaside manually. You can do this if for whatever reason you don't have a connection between NAV and, and SQL Server um, using the settings. So I'm going to save the object in NAV and if we go to Seaside and refresh the object designer we can now see that we have the customer top 10 list in our development environment. What we can do next is uh, we can actually have a look at how the report is currently printed by running the report from Seaside. It will launch it in the, uh, in the Windows client and I can preview the results and you can see that it actually shows the header, the logo, the company name, the page number and the footer in the preview. So how do we continue working on this report. We have uh, two options. The first option is to open the report from Seaside and select view and then layout. If I do that I actually get a pop-up message in the designer. 
the designer is telling me that I opened the layout from Seaside, which essentially is fine, but I'm missing out on a few features that would be nice to have. One of the features is being able to do a, a preview. I cannot preview the report when I run it from Seaside. Instead of running from Seaside, I can also close the 4NAV designer and if I run the report again, you may have noticed it in the first run, but we have an option here which is called Open Designer. This option will automatically hide itself if the designer is not installed on the system which is running the Windows client. But if the designer is, uh, is installed, it will automatically show this designer option. And if I preview the uh, report, I get the same look and feel. It opens the designer, but you can see we don't have the pop-up window and we actually have a preview window. The preview window is very nice because it allows me to just drag and drop a field. For example, the um, customer name. Let's drag in the customer name into this report. And I can preview the result without uh, having to save the report and run it over and over again. I can change the color of the name and, and preview and I can constantly work on a report without losing too much time. Let's close the report without saving and let's go back to Seaside and let's look at how this data set is created. You can see that in, in Seaside the data set is empty. It only has the customer data item but the fields, the columns that you would normally expect like um, name, uh, address, they don't exist. The reason is we don't need those columns to exist to use the data from the data item in, in Fornav. You can also see that this report doesn't have any other data items than customer and the customer data item is called list. There is a really important reason why this data source is called list and I'll get back to that about the end at, of the video. I'll explain why uh, we think that calling your data source list instead of customer is actually uh, a smart idea. So let's run the report again and open the report in the designer. You can see that even though there are no fields in the columns, you can still use all the fields from the customer table in the report. You can also see that our report in the data set has a data item which is called company information. And the company information is used in the report. If I go to my footer and if I go into the data, into the source expression, you can see it's using address and then company information field groups address, right? So it's getting information from the company information. How does this work? How does Fornav know to use the company information? In, in Fornav you can actually declare global variables. You can do that by clicking on records and on the assist edit from the property and here you will see that I have um, company information as a variable. I can simply add other records if I want to. I can simply say um, I want to drag in table 27 which is the item table and it will automatically create a data item for me which is called item. I'm not going to save that. I'm going to go into my um, other property which is called on pre-report. On pre-report, as you can see, uh, it kind of sounds like a, a trigger like we have in, in Seaside. And in the on pre-report, we can see that we have some, uh, some business logic, which is reading the company information from um, NAV, and it's um, calculating the value of the, of the picture field. In reports for NAV, you can actually program uh, CAL, but the underlying 
language that we are using is JavaScript. This is actually JavaScript which is converted into AL at runtime. We have a different video that explains how to work with this, but for now it's important to understand that this allows you to get data from Seaside without having to go to the uh, object designer. The advantage of doing that is it allows you to modify the report even if you don't have a report designer or application builder or solution developer license. Uh, you can simply create simple business logic um, without having to program anything in uh, CEL. You can still use CEL if you want. It's, it's, it's an option, but we prefer to use JavaScript. Let's have a look at the uh, other controls. You can see that we have a control here which is called dot dot name and the dot not dot dot is a short for cur report dot name. Cur report is a global variable that all report for nav reports have and um, it allows you to drag in the report caption which is automatically translated into the uh, caption with the language that the current user is using or if you change the language of the report in um, in Seaside it will use that language. It allows you to use the company name, um, the, the name of the report uh, which is typically the English name, uh, a page number, a uh, page count, um, a time uh, today and, and the user ID. And on top of that, we also have um, standard captions, which you can see here, we have captions like continued, copy, and I will get back to that um, during the webinar. And we have um, a watermark image that you can set in the report as well, which is outside of the scope of today's webinar. So if I uh, click on this data item, you can see it says company name. If I select this one, it's called today. If I select this one, it's called page. Page w is a very interesting one because page automatically converts into page one of one, page one of two, page two of two. And alternatively, in, in, in a lot of other uh, reporting solutions, you would have to go into uh, cur report and then um, uh, page number and then you would concatenate that with um, a string say of and then um, page count but then the word of would never be translated and, and if you use page it will be translated into the language uh, uh, that the customer is currently uh, running. So um, we have this control here, which is called uh, company information dot picture. This is dragging the picture from the company information into the report. Uh, of course, we support all the well-known uh, images that NAV supports as well, PNG, JPEG, bitmap, all of that. And on top of that, we also support um, PDF. And the advantage of using PDF would be that uh, it's a vectorized logo and it would allow you to scale your logo um, very nicely. So the next step would be to add some fields to the report, which I can simply do by going into my list data item, which is the customer table, and I can find my, uh, my name field and I can drag the name field into the body. I can go into the number field and put that next to it. You can see that um, report for NAV has a very nice uh, snapping feature. And you can see the pink lines allows me to nicely uh, put my controls right under each other. And if I try to make this one bigger, it will actually snap to the, the previous uh, control and I can continuously um, preview the result. Fornav now warns me that I have changed the dataset of my report. Why does it think I have changed the dataset of my report? I just dragged in the balance LCY field. The balance LCY field in NAV is a flow field and flow fields need to be calculated. 
4nav automatically detects that I want to do that and it will automatically update the properties and it will inject that property into Seaside. I can only do that if I run 4nav from the Windows client because that allows it to update the report in the background. So in this case I want to save my changes to the object in NAV and now it will automatically calculate the flow field and show me the flow field in the preview window. The flow field is calculated automatically. There is another way of, uh, of, 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 of working with, um, with fields. I can actually go in and select the controls all together and I'm going to do that by keeping my control key pressed on the keyboard. I know you can't see my keyboard, you have to trust me of, of doing that, but you can see that now the number field and the name field are both uh, selected and I'm also going to select my, um, my address field and I'm going to select again the balance LCY. If I drag those four fields in, you can see that it uses the full page width of my uh, report and it's also automatically generating a table object. A table object is something that we don't know from the NAV Classic Report Designer but we are familiar with table controls from, uh, from RDLC. The advantage of uh, table controls is that it allows me to, for example, select a number field, make this one smaller, and it will automatically free up the used space and use the, the, that space for my, for my other controls. The uh, table uh, control also, also allows me, for example, to select uh, styles and I can switch between an even style and an odd style. If I change my odd style to a new style and I select my background color to be Gains Pro, which is the background color that Microsoft advises in their, in their reporting guidelines, if I preview my report again, you will see that I have the nice odd and even line numbering that you are used to um, in, in NAV reports and this makes the report a lot easier to, uh, to, to, to read for, from an end user. Currently NAV prints the uh, address of the customer which is the, uh, the street name but let's say I also want to uh, check if, if address 2 is populated and I want to print the, uh, the postcode and the city and the country code of the, of the customer. Normally in Seaside I would have to go into, uh, into CAL and I would have to call into the uh, format address code unit, code unit 365. Uh, but we don't want to do that, we don't want to, uh, to program that and we also don't want uh, end users that don't have programming licenses to, uh, to be forced to call the partner to do that. Um, in NAV all the address fields are always the same. It's called a design pattern, something which is repeatable and everybody is doing it in the same way, kind of like a best practice. And um, in, in 4 nav we detect that and we put those into field groups. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to uh, clear the value of the address field. I can do that by resetting the source expression which will make it empty. And I'm going to drag in the address field. If I preview the report again, you will see that it now actually prints the entire address, although I cannot see the full address just yet. In order to do that, I have to make it a little bit uh, bigger. So if I preview the report again, now I can see the full address of the customer. So this is pretty cool. Don't have to program for that. So now the next step is that I want to sort my customers by, by balance. I want to have the customer that has the highest balance to show up first in my, in my report. To do that I can select my list control and then I get some uh, options here in my property grid and one of that is the data item table view and, and we know that normally from, from Seaside this is where you could set your sorting and I can set the sorting to any field in NAV. 
not just the primary key or the secondary key fields. So let me select balance LCY and I'm going to change the order from ascending to descending. Let's preview again and again Fornav is warning me that I've changed the data set. This is because I've changed properties that Fornav has to map from Fornav into Seaside. So again I'll ch save the changes in an AV and I'll continue to, uh, to run the report preview. So now you can see that I have the customer with the highest balance as my first customer and then it runs into smaller customers. Of course I'm not interested in customers that don't have any balance and I'm not even interested in customers that only have uh, a few hundred euros as, as a balance. I actually want, as the, as the name of the report um, says, I want to print my customer top 10 list. So in order to do that I'm going to change the max iteration to, uh, to 10 and let's see what that uh, does with my, my report. I'm saving it again because this is a seaside property which is going to be mapped. So now you can see that it only displays the first 10 customers in my database. If I close my report from the designer and I go back to seaside, if I design my report, you can see if I look at the customer properties that it actually moved the properties from Fornav into Seaside. It's sorting by balance, uh, it's calculating the balance field and the max iteration is moved to 10. So let's make a few more changes to this report. Uh, the first thing I want to do is I want to create some uh, header controls. So let's make some rooms for that and then we're going into the field list and in my list data item I have uh, an option which is called field captions and the field captions is showing me the same list of options that I have in um, as, as the normal fields but then if I drag these guys in they will actually show me the, uh, the caption. What I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, select the same fields as I did before. I'm going to use the address caption for the address that should work just fine and I'm going to drag in the balance LCY as well. Um, I need to make sure that the column widths are the same and I can use the snapping for that. You can see that it lights up nice and pink for the snapping and let's make this guy bold. Let's make it a little bit bigger and we will actually go into the borders and we will change the borders to all. If I preview my report you will see that it now prints the number, the address and the balance LCY. The next step is that I'm going to change the language on my NAV system. I'm going to switch from English to Dutch because I can actually understand that language. NAV 2018 comes shipped with all the languages that Microsoft supports but since I don't understand Danish I'm going to use Dutch and now I'm going to run my report again and if I press preview now you will see that the captions are now translated into Dutch captions and also something like page is now converted into pagina which is, which is Dutch for page I'm going to make two more changes to report and the first change is let's say that my customer asks me that they want to see the location name of, or the name of the default location of the customer so normally what I could do in, uh, in an AV is I can go into my, uh, into my list 
and um, my, my customer has a location code. This is the default location where normally this customer gets their uh, items from. And if I preview this report, it now prints the location of my customers, which is Geel, Blau, which is the Dutch uh, translation for yellow and, and blue. But of course we don't want to see this silly 10 digit code field. We want to see the proper name of the location. And normally in, uh, in Seaside you would either create a flow field from the customer table to the location table or you have to write some, uh, some business logic in, uh, in Seaside using variables. You can do the latter in, uh, in Fornav using JavaScript, but why would we actually do that if this is a very common request? So in Fornav we have something that we call field lookups. And because the location uh, code actually has a table relation to the location f uh, table, and the location table has a text field explaining the name of the location, we actually uh, scan the NAV metadata for you and we automatically drag in all those table relations. So I can drag in my location name and without writing a single line of code, I can actually see the description of my location. Yeah, it's pretty cool. The last thing I want to show you is how Fornav handles errors. So in order to do that, I have to deliberately make an error in my report. So let's actually change this to something that does not exist. Let's change this to name three, which is a field that this database is not aware of. And now I'm going to preview my report and you can see that I have two pages and if I switch to the second page, Fornav prints an error report. And the error report is actually telling me that uh, list.name3 does not exist. It's an unknown field. And the place that I put this is into the table cell and into the odd table cell, which, which in my case are the same, um, the same place. So if there is um, a, an error in Fornav, you can actually use the, um, um, the, the error page. We're getting close to the uh, end of the video. Uh, I think you're getting a pretty clear view of how to quickly create uh, a report in, in Reports for Nav. The last thing I want to show you is um, remember that I would promise you to explain why I think it is smart to call this guy uh, list. Let's change this one to, uh, to vendor and let's say file save as and I'm going to update this to vendor top 10 list. You see that the compiler accepts it because in NAV the field names are very consistent and if I run my report and preview the report it will now show me my vendor top 10 list. Right, so this is a very efficient way of, um, of, of quickly generating multiple reports without having to start from scratch. Thanks for watching this video and enjoy working with Reports for Nav. For now, it's here to help you with reports. We are ready to talk. Are you?